Hey, welcome to Driver 88 once again. You are joined after our very first podcast that we're going to be continuing a series on our channel alongside all our cinematic stuff and the car reviews, car banter, all that sort of thing. So our very first guest today is Ben from Life Through Optics. So welcome to him. Um, and it. I, I basically have not known Ben very long, but I have just noticed how much of a grind you've been on recently. We're seeing Ben at all sorts of, I guess, meets that we've also been at as well. So he, as you will know, when you have a common ground of cars being a topic and also just very, very easy to connect, of course, because of social media, um, noticing that you're just putting out a ton of work in the sort of creative space, in photography, um, car clubs, car events, all that sort of stuff. And I, I probably pretty much wanted to get Ben on to discuss. He's a guy who's on this journey turning his hobby, uh, his passion, trying to turn it into a business, which is a topic I always find interesting. Um, and as we sort of, Tom and I film cars and are really into audio visual stuff, can always discuss that as well. So man, thanks very much for coming on. Our first guest. No worries. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. No problem, man. Really appreciate it. My, my first time on a podcast, so yep. we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I can actually engage you with some, some riveting discussion. But, <laughs> We've already been, but we'll chatting. see. We've already yeah. been chatting a lot about every topic under the sun, but obviously car related. hundred percent. Um, what's up, man? I've seen, I've seen your, um, your Instagram absolutely exploded. You took a few nice pictures of my car not that long ago. Yeah, yeah, pretty recently. My ex car, but that's another story. But we'll oh, what? <laughs> yeah, that's another story. We're gonna, all right, another story. <laughs> it's news to you, but we'll put a vlog up about it. But oh, um, cool. We'll put some of those pictures up. Uh, I think we did a Benzema Stables thing. And, yeah. Benzema Stables, there you were, front and center. Yeah. yeah. And um, Ben sent me some really, really cool stuff. And since then, we've just been, yeah, following along and really, really cool. What I noticed and what I really like about your um, TikTok and your Instagram and all that sort of stuff, besides a lot of people who just post really beautiful photos and beautiful sort of like reels and stuff, mm. one thing I like about your focus is that you've cut these nice reels and you're talking to kids and talking to other enthusiasts and helping them, you know, hundred percent, man. talking about your journey, but also telling them, look, you don't need the expensive camera to do this and try this and try that. It's that element of sharing, which I've noticed yeah. is really engaging lots and lots of young guys and girls and they're getting in touch and discussing like you know i love photography too or yeah. i love cars too you know what should i be doing how much money should i spend where should i go well man that's exactly it and like because i'm so unbelievably passionate about cars about photography about creating things mm. why would i not want to share that with as many people as i possibly could yeah you know like as if i wouldn't want to share my knowledge so that other people can come in and enjoy it as well mm. like it's just it's a total no-brainer for me to just get out there and start to share what i know and share how i do things and yeah. and yeah it's been working surprisingly which yeah. is which is awesome like i had no idea yeah I had no idea it would blow up like it did. So. Yeah. So, so give me an idea because I've seen your sort of Instagram yeah. sort of exploding recently. Um, what What is the journey? Where did you sort of start from? What have you done professionally beforehand? Yeah. And where are you going? Perfect. So my background's in design. So industrial design, designing products and systems and services and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and that's what I kind of decided to do once I finished year 12, once I finished school. Yeah. Um, I was always a super creative guy and I always really loved drawing, but I actually didn't know that there was a career that I could do in design. I didn't know that a design career existed. So yeah. um, I kind of discovered that and I was like, wow, this is what this is what I want to be doing with my time, you know, once I finish school. Yeah. Um, but then over the journey of then, uh, I moved from Brisbane to Melbourne to study at RMIT to like do the whole bachelor through there. Yeah. Um, but over the process of studying, I kind of got burnt out on design along the way. And I spent, you know, two years in a diploma, four years doing a degree. And then I was spat out the other side of university, actually not really enjoying my my passion at that time, which was design. Mm -hmm. So that was a, that was a pretty tumultuous time I have to say yeah um to just slowly get eaten away by teaching staff lecturers too much theory not enough practical stuff and literally just grinding down my my design skill set that I've built up so yeah unfortunately it was too late so I got a job like we all do <laughs> yeah, I've sure. been there before. um like lots of us lots of lots of the audience out there I'm sure you've all just had to settle and get a job um yeah. so yeah I did. I managed to land a job um, for a food innovation hub um, okay. when I was still finishing my final year at uni. So that was cool. And that was actually a great job for the first few years because I cut my teeth on designing food and beverage products and packaging and all sorts of stuff like okay. that. So I worked on the Darryl Lee chocolate block, you know, Cadbury Marvelous Creations, Natural Confectionery Company, Jellies, 
Bickford's juice bottles, like all sorts of crazy stuff. Cool. And I was like really enjoying the process of being able to design something and then see it come out on shelf and like actually see my work and like ring up my parents and be like, hey, go and buy the Daryl Lee chocolate block because I did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That is um, But yeah, what, what then started to happen over the next few years was I would go on my kind of Christmas and New Year break and I would find myself gravitating towards taking photos with my friends, like just doing stuff, documenting, taking videos on my phone. Um, but whenever January would roll around again, I would pack photography and kind of whatever it was back into a little metaphoric box, slide it under my bed and just forget about it for the next year. Yeah. Um, and that happened for probably three years in a row. Um, but then between 2021 and 2022, I don't know, something just clicked in my head and I was like, look, I absolutely really love this stuff. I really enjoy it. I've noticed this trend in myself from 2018, 19, 20 to actually picking up a, a phone and starting to take photos. So I want to try this. I want to explore this potential area of, the, of passion that I've got. Yeah. Um, so that's when I decided to pony up some some money and buy a camera. Yeah. Buy some- um, and it always kind of, it makes it more, more real. Once you invest some money into it, it all of a sudden you're just like, okay, I've spent yeah. the money. Now I've got to go out and use it, you yeah. know, because otherwise I've just wasted which at the time, $1,600 or $1,400 on a, on a camera. Yeah. I was like, what am I doing? Like, I want I like to eat food. Like, this is like so much, so much money to, yeah. to put towards something I don't even know if I'll like. Yeah, I don't, I don't even want to say how much I've spent on GoPros cameras. Oh, for nice. sure, for sure. And I'm just scratching the surface. And like back in the day when I, well, like just a little over a year ago when I started this whole journey, that was so much money for me when it came yeah. to camera gear. But now I'm like, 10 grand yeah no worries like my whole metrics around it's still expensive but my whole metrics around gear and all that has totally changed but yeah um and then from there i bought the camera i bought sorry i bought the camera and i basically started trying a whole heap of different sorts of photography so portrait street automotive all that sort of stuff i watched a lot of youtube videos lots lots of north borders seventh era optical wonder like all these guys Mm -hmm. they taught me everything i know about photography just through their videos um, which was just super, super cool. Yeah. And then, yeah, through the process of literally just going out to shoot, forcing myself out of my comfort zone, coming back, reflecting on what I did well and what I didn't do well, and then just improving that every single week. I would yeah. go out and shoot every single weekend. Um, just do that for long enough and, and you, you build up a skill set. Yeah. So that's really how I started, for sure. Cool. So like, I obviously... Um, this is a car related podcast, but I guess mm. the, the first half, I guess the basic for you is you're obviously a person who loves design, yeah. loves to be creative. Yeah. Um, tell me about your history and your passion for cars uh, as the second half of that. Yeah, for sure. So man, that started when I was a kid, like a little Almost. kid, for sure. Like I'm yeah. sure many of us, um, but for me, it was watching Top Gear with my dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I was a little kid, like watching those three guys just do the thing that they did best, um, was super, super cool. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's I would say that's where it comes from. It, it's not very motorsport related. I didn't want, watch a lot of F1. I didn't I didn't watch a lot of Bathurst when I was a kid. Yeah, it's really from watching Top Gear, watching all the challenges, yeah. tuning in every single week when it was on like SBS in like standard definition, and we had to wait like months yeah. to get the the new season after it already came out in the UK. Yeah, my my Top Gear experience was always university holidays. I yeah, would, I would illegally download like the whole season at once and yep. binge it for nice. four days or something like that. Nice. Very modern, very <laughs> modern way of thinking about think consuming was... content, binging. <laughs> yeah. I think it was... wasn't a thing no, like no. 10 years ago. No, no, no. You know, 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. this was um, like live, live Lime 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 Yeah, Lime Lime Pirate Bay. Yeah. 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 yeah, Pirate Bay for sure. I mean, I guess obviously that's where, you know, Top Gear took us to that next level with all yep. audio visual stuff essentially. Yeah. Yep. Beautiful cinematics. It's not, you know, there was obviously some motorsport and top old Top Gear and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but all those, they really did take that audio visual stuff just to that ridiculous next level. They really did. And it's funny, a few years after that sort of period of Top Gear, which is probably at their height, like 2010, 2012, in my yeah. opinion, yeah. just after that was when YouTube kicked off. And I think that's when I realized I thought that all car reviews and, and car cinematics were like that Top Gear style. Yeah. Where it was just, you know, Jeremy and this like, frantic frantic editing where it's like you feel yeah. like you're having a stroke watching this yeah, car yeah. just cut 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 100%. as you know hopefully you could relate to what i mean 
And then sort of 2012, 13 rolled around and then my world changed, man. Like once I saw Chris Harris and it was yeah. like a 30 minute. Chris Harris drives. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. And Chris Harris was on Mars. And, and when yep. it was on drive and it was like a 30 minute, like deeper actual discussion and deeper experience around car ownership. And I'm literally and like getting that. chills, just <laughs> literally just yeah. thinking about that dude, honestly. Like that, that transition between that manic top gear, like over the top. Over the top drunk, I'm a tongue, just sort of, yeah. And then at the end of every single car review, it's like a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Whereas like with Chris Harris, he's telling you about, you know, mm. front control and he's talking about- This one, but while he's absolutely doing crashing the, the car, right. he's That's talking. Right. Like what? Yeah. And that was just, oh man, that blew my mind. And yeah, I reckon the too. amount of YouTubers who review cars today, um, I know that, uh, what's his name in the UK? Shmi150? No, not Shmi. The other, he's a BMW guy. I don't know. Don't ask me why. It's, we follow him on Instagram. Oh, Joe Achilles. Yes, Joe Achilles. Yeah. He started his channel because of watching early Chris Harris. Oh, I'm sure heaps of people have been inspired, including us, like with, with just, you know, trying to share that feeling of going yeah. on a nice morning drive and, and that feeling of, you know, how a car makes you feel and how you react to it and set up. But yeah, I, I, I certainly came up uh, watching Top Gear early. Yeah. And I also realized how much Hollywood it was. <laughs> oh no, for sure, for sure. I mean, it took me a little while to work out how Hollywood it was, but yeah. but man, like I'm still so deeply connected to the Aston Martin DB9 yeah. because of Top Gear, yeah. because of watching him race the train down to the south of France in that you, car, yeah. and the thing was like a freaking spaceship when it yeah. came out, and he's talking about the last one was just a jag in drag, a, you know, an XJS in a party frock, yeah, 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 you know? Yeah. And then boom, here's the DB9. He's fanging it down the highway. Like, yeah, that, that was definitely... I would love one. I need to buy one one day. Yeah. yeah. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> was it TFJJ who bought one? Is that someone we know, a photographer who bought a DB9? That's amazing. Personally, I'm all about, and we saw one for sale in our Lorbeck Luxury Cars, not yeah. Lugo. Yeah. Just after that is my favorite, is the, the Vanquish. Like... Vanquish, yeah, I love man, Vanquish too. the the looks of that, it yeah. looks better than the DB11 and the 12, in my opinion. <laughs> just, <laughs> in uh, my opinion. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I, I just think that that was just peak, peak, peak. Aston Martin. Um, anyway, yeah. So we can talk about brands all day, I guess. Well, what is, speaking of cars, um, what, what is sort of like a car that you remember that just completely, you know, that that's passenger's moment or that backseat moment where you were just like, oh my God, this is so amazing. Like, I'm hooked on this forever. Man, I honestly haven't spent that much time in fast cars. Well, that doesn't have like, to be a fast car. It can in, be... In, in a passenger ride or anything like that. Like, I do remember my mum driving around in a Mark IV GTI and whenever she was angry, she would like absolutely thrash it. Yeah, and like, we're yeah. just in the car and we're just like losing it. Going, oh my God, like getting a bit scared. <laughs> yeah. But like Park 4 GTI, not fast, no, you know? Yeah, but, but like when you're a kid, it kind of yeah. does. Mark 4 GTI uh, does a fairly fast. loved car, man. Like yeah. I'm, I'm all about uh, golfs, especially the older ones. Um, yeah, I know people have a lot of fair memories of Mark 5s. And, but yeah. the Mark 4 shape was pretty cool. It was boxy, but it kind of looked pretty good. Nice. values on the R32s. I know, Jen, now. I know. They're going off the Richter. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, and they, um, yeah, they've gone pretty crazy across the board. There's a number of those old hot hatches now that are just asking insane figures, particularly in Australia, because we always have these tiny, tiny amounts of numbers. Yeah. And then the ones that are not even that gray, they're still asking so much money because we're at the end of the world, end yeah. of the world in a right-hand drive market. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, a bit off topic, but I guess just cars, right? Um, but yeah, in terms of like <laughs> passenger experiences and being in the back seat, not not many really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I'm, I'm loving my car at the moment, which is yeah. an Alfa Romeo Giulia. I love the brands. Yeah, I love the Alfa Romeo brand. And that harks back again to my love for Top Gear because Jeremy Clarkson saying you can't be a true petrol head unless you're you an Alfa. Yeah. So my first car was an Alfa Romeo 159 and my second car is the Giulia. Do you want to hear a funny story? <laughs> I can tell this story now because it's three years old. Okay, All right. I, go for it. I've done so more dumb things. Um, you know that that song like I've done all the dumb things. Yeah, I've done that whole song in the period of the last three years of my life. Don't ask me why. It's just just the way it is. Okay, I own my first Alpha Stelvio. Ooh, I've always lovely. and and we did a whole series on the old channel about four different vlogs modifying it. Absolutely right. brilliant car. Yeah. Um, was it a quadrifolio? Oh yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, honestly, go drive now. And best I really want to. That's my it's my attainable dream car. Oh, a Julia Quadrifoglio, like, not a Stelvio, but this is and to show you at the time they were like 160, 170 yeah. grand. Yeah, no, Alpha yeah. were begging people to buy them. Like they were like 50 grand off. I'm not even joking. Even the same as the Julia, because 
obviously the brand strength is not that great in the last few years and then they didn't sell a lot of them so the depreciation was I, I got a brand new car for at least 50 grand off wow um and then that's mental and man such a fun car to drive um i i, I don't know what to blame exactly essentially i wrote off my first car and that was the alfa romeo <laughs> What's funny is it also, what's funny is also, I wrote it off right in front of a multi billionaire's house. Just, just, but these are very relatable. <laughs> these are very relatable stories you're telling me, Nick. I don't, I have, live, I don't live in the neighborhood. I just happened to be getting McDonald's in an okay. extremely wet, wet, dark night. Jeez. And dude. then, and then, <laughs> the hell. Yeah, yeah, I know. Good, good one, huh? Um, never ever ridden a car for off in my life. Yeah, um, right. Quite quite interesting. I mean, it doesn't take much to ride off a car now. You can just like hit the suspension. I wouldn't know. Yeah, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> well, they they just can't be bothered fixing cars anymore. Essentially. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. Um, no. From that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, the cost is so. Can do to just ride it What's off. funny is so I was stuck on the side of the road with this wheel that was essentially come off, yeah. um, and I'm just sitting there. And then the best part of this story is, uh, I've got really good luck. Yeah. That day I got a new phone. And don't ask me, I thought that my phone was connecting over the next few hours. And no, the Telstra employee had forgotten to put the SIM card in. So I was sitting there at the side of the road with a busted car in the middle oh, of Turak no. at the front of the multi-billionaire's house. I won't say who it is. In um, St. George's Road. <laughs> close. Um, <laughs> close. Uh, and um, so I'm stuck there with no phone. Well, I just want to call a tow truck and get out of there. But in, of course, I'm causing attention. It's pouring down with rain. And it hadn't it hadn't rained for weeks. It was yep. really hot. Anyway, summertime. Um, so then I'm sitting there like an idiot in a busted Alpha at the side of just some place. Just giving Alpha Romeo's a bad rep. Well, I'm giving Alpha's a bad rep, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, funny story. And then it got worse from there, I guess, essentially, because I couldn't get out of there. Because I couldn't call anyone. <laughs> so how did it all how did it all shake out? Like what happened? You got a tow truck, did you walk yeah, into the Yeah, well, okay, oh, sorry, you yeah. can I use your phone? I'll get to that. So <laughs> okay. there's these I'm not even joking. This place takes up multiple streets. So this home, one home takes up multiple streets. That's how big it is. What? Um, because of the way it's like a big, multi, you know, multi-angle thing. So there's like, I'm not even joking, 12 foot gates. I'll easily be 12 foot gates. This massive thing just starts opening up ahead of me like this. It's like something out of Star Wars or whatever. Yeah. This guy pops his head out. I hope you can hear me. This guy pops his head out around the corner and he's like, oh, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, fine. Thank you. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, are you fine? I'm like, yeah, no problem. I'm fine as long as everything's all right, blah, blah, blah. So he gave me his phone and uh, he was the caretaker. Oh, yeah. So he's a caretaker. <laughs> so the caretaker of this uh, billionaire's Lovely. place yeah. drove me home, which was like, oh, wow. which was like a kilometer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that was it. So I didn't. So know. you just <laughs> left the Stelvio side of the road. Well, when I when he got me home, then I emailed. I emailed. I you know got on the internet, Facebook yeah. my girlfriend. And then yeah, at the time, and then just got called the tow truck driver. But yeah, that's my story, man. I didn't think I was going to say that, but whatever. That's Alpha, right? It Alpha like Stelvio that. QV. Honestly, off topic, but Alpha Stelvio QV. One of the most fun SUVs yeah. to drive. Absolutely. It's it's lively, obviously. Uh, it's got good power. I, I still question the reliability a little bit, yeah. um, but great engine, like so just good. so nice to drive. I've had no issues with mine, but it's just the two liter turbo. Yeah. So I'm I'm assuming the twin turbo V6, it's high, more highly strung. So you may have some issues, but whenever I go into Zagami to see the team and just have a chat, they're always like, oh, you know, they're, they're doing great. These cars, you know, they're beautiful. Beautiful cars. <laughs> they are nothing, beautiful. Nothing goes wrong. Like they are beautiful. Absolutely. They have yeah. all sorts of battery issues and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, a Julia yeah. is a, just an amazing chassis. Like so nice. Oh man, yeah. even base model. Like if you, if you were to compare, not obviously the new updated three series, but like F80 gen three series against base model Julia, the alpha wins out every single time. Steering feel, speed, you know, it's, it's very rear, it's rear drive as well. Like, you know, great drive modes and gearbox. It, it shoves you in your back when you're, you know, when you're accelerating yeah. away. I have driven the two liter before and I thought it was, yeah, quite good. Quite yeah. good. Solid. Solid. Very cool. All right. So I guess talked about cars for a bit, but also wanted to talk about how, um, I guess, having a YouTube channel, having an Instagram page, which has been, I guess, in the last few years, incredibly hard to grow. Mm. And um, you were just telling us before, in one week, I've never heard of this before, you've gone from 
thousand followers to a hundred thousand in how long? Six days. Six days. <laughs> Wait, you don't have OnlyFans, do you? No, no. I'm yet to dive into OnlyFans, but uh, maybe if people use it, what it was actually intended for initially, which was just to be a place to connect with your fans, hence the name. Yeah. Um, but maybe I can start to sell some prints or give away prints on OnlyFans. Who yeah, knows? You could. Um, but yeah, so that was that was crazy. Yeah. This all happened back in January of this year as well, so not that long Shit. ago. Okay. Um, I've because I've only been taking photos and doing kind of, create you know creating content since March last year. Okay. Um, so it's been what a year and three months. So yeah. more that I've been doing photography. Yeah. Um, and I was just kind of hustling away and posting as much as I could, and I've basically like what what people don't see is they see the the big blow up, but they don't see the grinding that yeah, happened before that. So yeah. basically from October to January, I was posting twice a day, every single day. And I, I still am right now. Yeah. Um, but doing, doing that quiet work when no one gives a crap is like so important. You know, when no one's watching, no one cares. You're just there. You show up. I had like 500 followers back in October last year. Crazy. You know? Crazy. So then from, from October to January, I went from 500 to 3000. Um, and then I had a post go mega viral, like a short, like a reel go viral on Instagram and TikTok at yeah. the same time. Um, it's sitting at like 4 million views, which is like not anything crazy, but I think... Gives you a start, I guess. Well, it, I accidentally made the best ad I possibly could for my Instagram account. Like it was me talking to another guy. Uh, I was talking to Hypo34, Brendan, who owns a, a yellow um, Nissan Skyline R34. Yeah. And... We were doing a shoot together and he's like, man, I didn't realize your IG was all about tutorials and helping people and all that. And I and I just kind of cut it up without thinking because I was getting to a place where twice a day, every day for, you know, from October to January, I was starting to get really burnt out. And I literally that night, I was going to call it quits. I was going to give up and just be like, nah, you know what? I won't post tonight. I'll just post tomorrow. But I've had this saying go on repeat in my head for the last year, which is this is when it counts. So like, if I ever feel like, you know, oh, I, I can't post today. It's been such a massive day at work. You know, I've had such a terrible day, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, 11 o'clock at night. I haven't even started making my content for today. Yeah. I just go, I turn it off and I'm just like, this is when it counts, mate. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I did it that night and I just basically just crapped out this video. Like it was nothing special. Just, just really slapped it together, yeah. uploaded it, went to sleep. And I just hit 3,000 followers and I was like so stoked. I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to share this with the people, like with my followers in the morning and be like, yes, you know, we made it 3K. And then I went to sleep and it was 2 a.m. because it was like, you know, pretty late by the time I got to bed and then went to bed with 3K, woke up with eight, you know, just in a few hours. Like I woke up at 7.30, so like 5K in a few hours. And then over the course of the next six days and over the course of the next kind of two weeks it went crazy like i had a, a record day where i got thirty-two thousand followers in one day yeah yeah i mean that's that's the way social media i guess yeah i always sort of has viewed it i guess especially on newer platforms yeah um sometimes you just need that you need that breakthrough and obviously uh need that breakthrough after grinding away for a, a long well yeah because the time. break the breakthrough won't work properly it won't catch on properly unless you have the substance behind it so what was happening was people watch this video but then they every every other one of my videos around it blew up as well. So that they started getting a couple of hundred thousand, few yeah. hundred thousand so trickle, views. Trickle down. And it was like they were on like two thousand views. Yeah. You know, and now they're on like three hundred, four hundred thousand views yeah. because everything starts to just take off. Yeah. And what what kicks on more? I find that like there's two different worlds. I, I guess it's kind of a Euro world, yeah, there's a supercar world, and then there's a JDM world. And it yeah. seems to me for years and years and years and still to this day that for one reason or another, JDM people really love photography. Like yeah. they really love edited shots and different sort of rollers and all that sort of stuff. Um, Hard Net Media does a lot of that rolling yep. shots of JDM stuff, and people just like lose their mind over it. It's so, it's the Fast and Furious culture. That I guess grew so up it's with. still yeah. it's still That's kicking on, right? That I didn't mention before about my love for cars is Fast and Furious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. yeah J JDM is something that um, I sort of always liked, but I've never been fully ingrained in. I've got a lot of mates who own and love JDM stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've seen, we probably could put up some of Ben's work right now on a mixture of JDM and whatever. Recently, I think you've done a bunch of BMW stuff as well. Yeah. A bunch of BMW stuff. Um, yeah. So F80 Serik, RV, he's, um, he's a really awesome guy and he's been, 
you know, facilitating these amazing opportunities for me and a, and a whole heap of other photographers to go out and shoot a whole bunch of BMW M cars. Yeah. Um, and I love BMW M. I, I want to eventually buy an E92. I was just waiting for you to say, like, I want to buy an M3. I just, yeah. I was I mean, it's the E92 for me, the V8, you know, all that sort of stuff. That's that's what I really want to go and, go ahead and buy. But yeah, he's been facilitating these amazing opportunities, going out to beautiful locations, shooting all these cars and just empowering photographers that he knows yeah. to be able to start to put put content together. And that's been amazing, just yeah. growing that kind of crew. You know, we were talking about, bef- about it before, how important people are, Yeah, you know, and like, so many, so many people forget with social media, you have to remember that the word social's in there. So like, it's about people, Yeah, yeah. you know? So I think for me, it's about connecting with people like yourself and, and Tom and, and obviously making sure that you're getting out there and putting yourself in front of as many people as you can and growing, you know, growing your kind of local network so your global network can grow. I don't know. No, I'm 100%. Um, absolutely. Yeah. I, for me, it's just, it's all about the people, Yeah, yeah. you know? I cannot tell you how many people... Um, cause some people just think I'm a, a wanker who shares pictures of cars and watches. Is that, but, that's not the case. No, 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 no but, <laughs> but don't tell me who I am. Don't worry. Um, the amount of friends I've made through Instagram and for years, I never, ever wanted Instagram. I thought mm. it was just this like absolute whatever fest. Yeah. The amount of friends and like nice people I've met through Instagram. Dude, hundred percent. And, and obviously this conversation right here is because it's, it's all because of, because of that. And yeah. it's purely because we just share a common interest. It doesn't mean that either person is trying to show off or whatever it is. Yeah, it's dude. just a common interest and people share a common interest. And it's, it's huge because not necessarily like, like my friendship group at the moment, they're not particularly interested in things that I'm interested in. Yeah. They don't particularly like cars. They don't particularly like photography. Yeah. So in the past, you'd have to turn up to cars and coffee by yourself on a Sunday and keep turning up or walk into dealerships and talk, talk to, to people. Strangers I don't know, talk to strangers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now you can kind of get around all that by just finding people, like-minded people on social media and giving them a follow, chucking them a yeah. message. Yeah. Like all my photographer friends are because of Instagram, Yeah, yeah. you know? I mean, And having that friendship group has been just so key. Yeah, you know, it provides you with so much value in your life. Yeah. And obviously we're not breaking new ground by saying that. I mean, no. some of you people have said that before, but we're saying it, I guess, because of just the value and how much stuff it's given us. So very, very, very- People cool. overlook simple stuff, mate. Like they really do. Like just the simple, the simple stuff is overlooked. As much as we talk about cars, I guess I'm, I'm interested in always like people trying to build businesses and stuff. Yeah. How are you going by- I guess people would probably be interested. Um, how are you finding that transition between going from having lots of followers, having lots of people enjoy your stuff, and then trying to monetize that without ruining it? Yeah, and I think a lot of a lot of people like myself probably assume that when you see a big follower number, you're just like, oh yeah, that person does it full time and they're making good money and whatever. Yeah. This is their job. Yeah. But what I've realized is that's just not the case. So like, I'm sitting on like I think two two hundred seventy four thousand at the moment. I've got friends that have much more than that, much less than that. Mm. Um, and obviously the guys that I thought had more or have more, I thought they'd be doing it full time, but that's not the case. So it is very, very hard to go from just being a, a social media personality to turning it into a business, you know? Mm. Um, and I've been, I've been very fortunate to kind of find a bit of an inspiration and a mentor in that space. Yeah. I'm going to probably butcher his surname, but Tom Nosky, Tom Nosk, um, he's a guy that, has basically through his content, you know, quite passively, he's basically told me everything I need to know about building a business through social media. Um, and then also doing his workshops, his time to build workshops that he's got at the moment. Um, that actually completely foundationally changed the way I think about content. Yeah. You know, he starts off by saying, you don't have a content problem, you have a volume problem. Yeah. You know, there's all these screw perfectionism, throw it out the window get everything to 70% quality, move it on, publish more, more work. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, it's like the Gary Vaynerchuk method kind of thing. Yeah, document, don't create, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's be- been really transformative for me in how I think about social media as a business. So the way that he taught me to do it was to build kind of digital product offers. And for photographers, I'm sure you guys know, preset packs are kind of the thing that's that a lot of photographers do, among other things, you know, filmmakers yeah. do LUTs. Um, you can sell wallpapers and stuff like that, which I'm doing. Um, but yeah, that's that's been going really, really well. You know, I've tried to infuse what I do with my content into that preset pack, and I really stand behind stand behind it. Like it actually works. These are the presets I use every single day to edit my shots and edit the photos that I shot of your car. Yeah. Um, and all that sort of stuff. But 
also not being afraid to, despite having that paid offer, also sharing it on your store on your page as well. Like I don't know if you've seen the editing breakdown posts that I do. Yeah. Um, those are literally the presets out of the pack that I'm just giving away. Mm. Um, and 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 I do that so that I can build credentials with my audience and be seen as a bit of an authority figure in that space. Yeah. And I know that I've still got such a long way to go. Um, you know, you're going to have Heartnet Media on here soon. Yeah. And and he's been doing it what for ten years plus. Probably yeah. Um. And I know I've got a lot of a lot of work ahead of me to be able to get to that stage. Yeah. But for right now, I'm just incredibly grateful and privileged to be able to share what I know mm. and have people back me enough to want to actually give some of their hard-earned dollars to me. Yeah. For so sure. that I can do my thing and and bring even more value to people. So yeah. I'm still working full time in in my design job at the moment. Awesome. But I'm hoping to transition out in December of this year. Awesome. I have I have I'm manifesting it so hard. I've already written my letter of resignation. I love I it's in it, the top drawer of my desk. Hell yeah. Literally November 8th, it goes in. December 8th, my last day, done. Fuck yeah, man. We're going to have you in January then. We'll have you like back on the show. We'll see where you That'd go. be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, I don't fail miserably. Oh, who cares? Who cares either way? It's just yeah. being on the path is the best part about it. Same yeah. for me and Tom. Like we just love filming cars and love telling stories and that's what it's all about and showing yeah. stuff. Um, thank you so much for coming on, man. I feel the energy. I feel pumped up. And that's, I guess, you know, a big part of the reason why I wanted to have you on is because I feel that energy coming through, the passion for filming, creating, and just vehicles um, and thank people. You, and it. yeah, man, thank you so much. Well, I'm sure we'll see you again and, you know, collaborate or whatever. But awesome. Thanks, just, so much. thanks very much for coming on, guys. This is the Driver 88 podcast. This is a life through optics. Uh, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks very much. See ya.